Hello everybody and welcome back to another RCT2 review. Uh, today we are continuing our head-to-head -head 9 reviews as we roll into round 5. Uh, this is round 5, match 1, uh, featuring Logan's Run, which is my team, versus the Scream Queens. Uh, so we will start with Logan's Run. Uh, this is Drumvrupt. Uh, this was built by Six Frags uh, with 45% of the share, 38% by Janae, and 17% by Mr. Brightside. Uh, so this is sort of a fantasy um, fairy tale type setting, sort of based on the uh, ride of the same name at Efteling, Dark Ride. So we uh, kind of jump in here to a, a pretty nice size wing coaster here. Uh, Mr. Brightside did both of these layouts and uh, did a very nice job on both of these, in my opinion. Um, Love the interaction here over top of the ride entrance. Uh, this nice gliding airtime hill and this outward banked corner over top. Um, probably my favorite thing about this is the supports, uh, which uh, Six Rags did quite a lot of these nice curved supports. Uh, love this loop right here uh, that has little kind of leaves off of it and the flowers and everything going around it. Um, really, really nicely done and uh, kind of gives it that cool fantasy feel. And as you turn around a little bit, you can kind of see some of these you know, floating overhead. And you'll see as you go through the park, it's very green, very green, very brown. Uh, so we get a lot of this sort of fantasy forest feel to everything. Um, cool castle. So you come in sort of underneath of this big castle tower, which is the station for the dark ride uh, here. So this is the uh, ride of namesake ride of the park, I suppose. Um, and also the same kind of ride system as uh, Efteling has on their uh, dark ride. And this goes all the way around the park. You can kind of see it carries all the way around to uh, the end there. But as we come in, uh, we've got this kind of great tall rock work on either side. A lot of just clickable things, a lot of things that are flying around. Um, and so things like this that you'll see. So this is... Uh, all the a number of the different builders have uh, their own rides rather than frozen peeps that um, have kind of a little storyline behind it all. So a lot of little clickable things, cool uh, cool stuff like that. The nice plaza as we come in, and then kind of the first ride that we oh first ride that we open up to zoom out again is our uh, water ride here. So uh, this is Eftel Splash uh, or Elfin Splash. Um, sort of a hybrid log flume, splash boats, whatever ride. Um, lots of stuff to look at here. Actually, this is a pretty expansive ride. We got our station over here, which is very kind of elven, um, nice kind of light flowy architecture with these uh, tall arches and colors and everything. And I, I, I do really like this architecture. I think this is very pretty. Um, loving this waterfall here that they have a little splash on the, the side of the lift so that you kind of get that um, feeling like it is sort of hitting the lift hill and then coming down off of the uh, the side of it. A little bit of wrap around here up into this big castle as well as we drop down uh, through a splash and then underneath the second coaster back here. Uh, this is a cool little uh, fantasy-esque element with the uh, fairies that are floating the boats up to the upper level there. Um, so it's a nice little blend of fantasy and realism uh, through this whole thing. Uh, wrapping up this tall tower of um, rocks and plants and everything else to the big splash down here. Uh, I love how it follows the pathway, or I guess more accurately, the pathway follows the ride. Uh, feels very natural fitting in there. Uh, and really, the, a lot of these rides are sort of... Um, circled around each other. So you've got this great little boat ride right here uh, going all the way around. Uh, there's also a um, little swan boats ride that crosses between uh, across the two locations. Uh, so that's very nicely done. And then there's a number of small rides here. So you've got your uh, little unicorn carousel. There's a custom swing or a uh, swing ride here. It has the flowers hanging down. So very kind of picturesque uh, look to the whole thing. If we move to the back side here, we've got these other two coasters, and uh, I think these are a lot of fun. This is another Mr. Brightside layout. First of all, the station, which is super cool, 
uh, using the volcano here and the waterfalls all down the thing. Um, maybe a little repetitive on the textures, but um, I really like the the overall just aesthetic of this. Um, but these coasters are cool. I'm going to actually hide the scenery here for a minute to just look at this whole thing. But um, there are two spinning coasters using the um, Mock Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster that Space K has made. Um, but one of them is more a family coaster and one of them is more an extreme coaster. So a pretty cool take on uh, the whole idea here. This was originally based off of the, the Winges uh, spinning coaster at Fantasialand. Uh, so it has some of those elements here, but you'll see the, the red one has all the uh, inversions and everything like that. And this sort of purplish gray one is more family uh, style. So you get a little bit of nice interaction here where they're passing each other. Um, you get this really cool helix right in the middle of all the trees. I'll turn this back on so you can kind of see it just peeking through the trees as the uh, purple side goes up and the red side goes down. So you're kind of guaranteed a pass. Uh, which I uh, really like that idea and just the way that it sort of interacts throughout this, um, I guess, valley of sorts that it wraps around uh, with all these great waterfalls and everything. Uh, you've got this, uh, a lot of these tall trees, uh, they do block a little bit of the view, but um, I, I like the look of it and they, they have a nice sort of natural feel. They don't necessarily feel like heavy track architecture trees as you sometimes run into uh, in the game. But I do think they were very well done. Uh, same with the drop ride here that's uh, naturally put into a uh, a log. If we spin around to the back side here, we can see a little bit of this natural um, kind of rock archways and things that the coaster goes through. And then some of these other little rides underneath with these trolls and fairies and things going throughout. So spinning to uh, this side, you can see that just underneath here. So a lot of little things to go explore and click on. Uh, here's a Sons of Volrock, a um, little flying ride through the underground space. So really using the using the area pretty fully. Uh, we've got this little spinning uh, ride here as well. Um, and up top we have our cool floating uh, castles. And I do love the little sparkles and everything else. Sort of gives it that sort of magical, whimsical feel uh, through the, the whole thing. Um, so I really enjoyed this park. I, I didn't um, get to see a lot of it uh, while it was built just because I was away on, on holiday, but um, seeing it in its finished state is, is really, really nice to see uh, just because it um, you know, uses these textures and sort of natural appeal very well. Um, yeah, like I said before, it's definitely repetitive uh, through some of these bits and pieces, but um, yeah, I think that's kind of okay. Uh, given more time, I'm sure it could have been fully uh, or, or further refined, but uh, as it currently stands, I certainly don't dislike it, and uh, I think it um, works really well. It feels very, very much like they achieved what the uh, original goal of the park was to sort of get that fantasy-esque feel from the Efteling ride and kind of carry it across a, a full theme park. Um, so even though I've not been there, I can kind of certainly feel the that that sort of overall design and, and aesthetic carried through to this this full park. So very nice job to the team. Um, let's move on to the other side. So this is the uh, Scream Queens Park. Uh, this is Billum uh, Aternus. This is 75% by Robbie92, 20% by Belgian Guy, and 5% by Dr. Dirk. Uh, so the idea for this one, anybody who's kind of traveled or into architecture will recognize this uh, as uh, St. Peter's, and we've got the square in front of it, um, and all of that recreated here in the game. Um, and what we've got is sort of uh, a Dan Brown Angels and Demons type vibe going on here, so there's definitely some kind of an attack going on um, with uh, some sort of spiritual entity of, of some kind flying around here. As you can see up top, so let me click on some of these. So we've got this, uh, uh, these little creatures that are up and about the, the big dome on, on top. Uh, first thing striking me is just the architecture, and that's typical of any kind of Robbie 92 park, is that you're just going to get incredible architecture throughout the whole thing. Um, so relatively light on the outsides, but uh, once you get inside here, it's just really strong. 
Um, this palette too, you know, we have our, our dusk slash kind of night palette, uh, is really interesting with the way that the objects are used to create some kind of light and shadow and glow. Um, you look at the uh, basilica itself here and how the, the layers of yellow kind of give it that glow, give it that, uh, that feeling throughout the whole thing. Um, so a really cool attempt at um, really pushing the nighttime palette to the next level. So out here in the plaza, we've got a little bit of chaos going on. There's definitely some, some blood hanging around and a big hole has opened up in the pavement. And you can kind of see down to our uh, little ride, our Illuminati ride down below, which we'll see a little bit more of uh, in a bit. Um, so I kind of love this just wide, pristine plaza that's now kind of dotted with all these issues and um, just trash and things falling apart. And there's definitely a kind of disaster going on, which is uh, cool to see. I, I, the colonnade here, I'm a huge fan of. Um, and then two on the on the sides using the uh, uh, tile inspector's um, ride for the uh, statues. Uh, cool idea there for the whole thing. So we have helicopters over top, so there all the news or news copters are kind of flying around seeing what's going on. Um, and then we have our coaster here. So the coaster is uh, another wing coaster. So we've got two of those here coming along. Um, let's, uh, let's see here, stop on block breaks. Let's go ahead and reset this real quick. And we can watch this one go. Um, wing coaster kind of flying overhead. You've got these different colors on the track in a couple of spots. Um, not necessarily the biggest fan of the color changes and honestly the layout as a whole, it's not necessarily my favorite, but, uh, the support work is really great. Um, it does a very nice job on, uh, on the whole, uh, as far as that goes. Um, just realized that as I reset this, it may not have the same mass or trains. So we're going to see what's going on here. Uh, let me just actually re reload this real quick. Just to I want it to be able to perform as it uh, as intended. Oh, it still may be stuck. There we go. So we can't see underneath, and just not a whole lot going on underneath here. Uh, unfortunately, there's not cutaway view, and I, I'm sure that must have been something that would have been taken into consideration if there was uh, more time to be had, uh, because this would be a fabulous cutaway. Um, but that's, I think that's totally fair. I mean, we're, to even suggest it, I feel like is a little bit spoiled um, as we've come kind of so far in all of this. Uh, but anyway, here we go, much better pacing, much better, uh, much better rolling here for the coaster. So wing coasters are definitely hard to make in the game and the custom trains for this, um, are uh, not quite correct as far as friction goes, so you really have to work through that and change the ride mass to get it to do what you want. Um, love all these interactions. Uh, unfortunately, the scenery and the ride track gets a little bit close, so we get a lot of clipping kind of throughout. Uh, one of the cool bits here, though, at the end is uh, here as it dives back into the building, you've got the sort of red smoke and flame and stuff going up, and this taxi that's like halfway crashed down into the pit uh, really cool way to do that, uh, and a nice little detail here as you wrap around the back side of the building. So we can see more of this cutaway here down below with the uh, ride, uh, this Illuminati ride, and uh, we can go ahead and actually pull away and take a look at this. Take down. So most of this you can actually see from the various cutaway um, natural cutaways that they have on the side, but you know, it's still worth looking into and kind of seeing what all is going on down here. Um, and there's a lot of clickable uh, peeps, uh, staff members that kind of explain out the story a little bit. And you've got a few kind of neat areas here as it's, um, as it's pulled back. So a pretty cool way to go about this. Uh, again, I'm sure given more time there, they would have liked to have fleshed this out a little bit further, but uh, you know, it is very strong as a whole right now. You know, pull this back up and you can really appreciate the architecture and the detail and, and everything like that. It's certainly some of the most massive architecture that we've seen so far. And I, I will say specifically one of the things I was most impressed with on this map was this dome itself. 
Um, it is hard as heck to do any kind of arch dome curves, anything like that in the game. And this just looks really, really well done. There's a little bit of half diagonal in there, a little bit of full diagonal, and just the way that it all flows up together into the whole thing is is pretty masterful. So congratulations to Robbie for doing a very nice job on that whole thing. Um, we can get little bits of that sort of thing as well. We've got our uh, chapel here on the side with our uh, white smoke coming up out of the uh, the chimney there, as uh, you might expect from uh, this sort of thing. So lots to see. I mean, I think for me, like I said, the two the two biggest takeaways from this one are this this dome being just fantastic, and also the um, the way that the light and shadow is kind of played in this, um, because you really don't read this. Um, couple colors, couple shades worth of yellow in the building as like a building material. You kind of read it as like a glowing lit accent. Um, so I I commend that for being a very successful use of color and object in here. And I know the whole team uh, for the Scream Queens did a very nice job as far as developing out the right pieces and parts for that sort of thing. Um, so very neat, and uh, this was definitely enough for the community to vote this one the winner. Uh, it was another close match. Uh, it seems like all of the uh, matches that my team participates in end up very close, but uh, 34 to 29 was the uh, ending score. So Scream Queens take the victory and uh, another win in their books. Uh, so congratulations to their team. Congratulations to Robbie Belgian Guy and Dr. Dirt on this one. Uh, that's all we've got for match one of round five. We'll be back for matches two and three here upcoming as we continue through the series and uh, get closer to the finals. So until next time, thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day. Bye now.